figure for me for some time. Okay, I may have bouts of cough. So please, I am uh, please, I'm asking your indulgence for that. Now, uh, is there anyone who doesn't understand Bengali? You don't understand Bengali? Okay, then I have to speak in English. Okay. Again, a very good afternoon to all of you. And at least uh, my colleagues in various colleges, from various colleges, students, friends, and at least one of my teachers is here, Muni uh, She taught him in my BSc. So it's nice to see her here. Hey, we keep on meeting, particularly in my own alma mater presidency. But anyway, it's always nice to see her. I was asked uh, to talk of uh, the life and science of a scientist. Particularly, I picked C.B. Raman. So please, next slide. You can see the photos, I'm sure. The <clears throat> that's the background is an old painting. And perhaps, is there a point or something? The, the building on the left uh, does not exist anymore. There is the Senate Hall. Then we have the Hayar School, Presidency College. It was a college at that time. We are talking of a 19th century and the old building of Hindu school. So this is the, the this was the situation in the 19th century. I was looking for a uh, picture which represents Kolkata because my topic is Ramon in Kolkata, Calcutta. Now, what happened is that uh, all the standard uh, pictures that represent Kolkata, basically Howrah Bridge and the Second Hugli Bridge, that's all, what I found. And none of them existed when uh, Ramon was here. So uh, I chose the old painting. And of course, you can see the Victoria Memorial, which has completed in 1922. So at that time, of course, Ramon was here. Next slide, please. So uh, I don't know whether you can read it. Uh, so the, this is a message to the citizens of Kolkata by Raman. It was painted in 1931. For nearly a quarter of a century, it has been my privilege to live and walk in this great city, and I have learned to love it as my home. The opportunities that have come to me to serve the cause of science and of our country are due to the effects of two of Calcutta's greatest citizens in the past, Dr. Mohindral Sikar and Sir Ashudash Mukherjee, to them and to many others, happily still living, I owe, to, owe a deep debt. This was uh, given to the Calcutta Municipal, Kolkata Municipal, Calcutta Municipal Corporation at that time. This was a message that was sent uh, by Raman in 1931 for the special issue of the Municipal Gadget. Next slide. So just to, uh, I, my talk, topic is Raman in Kolkata, but just to, Go way back a bit. So Raman was born on November 7, 1888, uh, second son of Ramanathan Chandrasekhar Ayer and Parvati. He passed matriculation at the age of 11 and he stood first. In fact, there was no exam where he stood second. Then he studied uh, intermediate from uh, this Mrs. A.V. Narasimhanao College in Vishakhapatnam. He was born in Tanjore, where his father was a lecturer. Then he completed BA and MA from Presidency College Madras, now Chennai. And standing first in both the examination, he passed a master's result was published in 1907, January. So that means at that time, he was just 18 years and two months old. And he published his first paper in Philosophical Magazine in 19, it was a single author paper in 1906. So at that time, he was an MSc student, MS student. At that time, there was no MSc degree, it was MA. And Raman was no, no actually uh, Raman was uh, not allowed. Raman one Raman and his uh, call, uh, family wanted Raman to go abroad for study, but the civil surgeon said that no, his health is not good, so it will not be. It, 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 you know the story of mm -hmm. Ramanujam. So uh, the civil surgeon said it should not be. He should not go to England. And Raman later said that it was a boon that civil surgeon said that I could not go to because if I had gone to England. Surely, I should have gone for ICS. And definitely, Ramon would have succeeded, no doubt about that. 
and then uh, there was no uh, possibility of ICS, so he opted for the financial civil service, and financial civil service again he stood first, and he was posted in Kolkata. Next slide. So uh, Raman came uh, here in June in this uh, city in June in 1907. Just before that, he married Lokeshendri. Uh, it was a uh, something of a um, scandal at that time because of uh, first of all, uh, Raman chose her own bride. Secondly, uh, uh, they are both of Brahmins, but not from the same caste. So in South India, uh, sub caste. So in South India, that marriage was actually not allowed. And thirdly, that he refused to take a dowry. So for the three reasons, uh, he, it was a scandal in that, that time. So it was fortunate that, uh, you see that Kolkata at that time was the capital of British India. And the science, whatever it was being done at that time, at that period was being done in Kolkata, no doubt about that. So remember that he came in 1907. In 1900, when the uh, capital shifted to Delhi, so most probably the financial civil service would have uh, posted him in Delhi. And then there would be no possibility for Raman to continue research. Because he was in Kolkata, uh, he, he, had this, he had this opportunity to, to do science and that you know what re that resulted in. So Raman basically carried out, uh, the, when he was in Kolkata, we will not talk of Raman's uh, later life in Bangalore. So uh, when he was in Kolkata, he carried out his work in two institutions, apart from this financial civil service, which was his office. So scientific work research was carried out in two institutions. One was the Indian Association for Cultivation of Science, and the other was the University of Calcutta. So let us, next slide. So uh, the Indian Association for Cultivation of Science was established by uh, Dr. Mohindral Sarkar, a famous physician, in 1876. So, uh, there was a law. Actually, he uh, wanted that Indians can do science research, but there was a lot of opposition. Now it is difficult to understand, but at that time there was an uh, there was the idea that uh, it's not time for Indians to do science. What we should do now is to go for technology, that is engineering research. Uh, and there was something called India League. There was something called India League, which was uh, proposing this, and so the uh, actually uh, Mandela had to. Asked for subscription. Vidyasar, for example, Vidyasar gave him 1,000 rupees. And Vidyasar also brought him to, uh, I've forgotten the name, but the, some Jaminder's house <coughs> here in North uh, Kolkata. And then uh, Vidyasar uh, said that, okay, you, uh, uh, Mohan, I'm going and you come with me. And then uh, he said that uh, uh, when Mandral here is uh, creating a new institution, you must uh, help him. So the Javindar, I'm sorry, I've forgotten his name. Uh, Javindar had asked, they said that, uh, how much do, uh, do, you, do you think I should do? It? So Vidya said 10,000. So the Javindar said, you see that 10,000, of course, at that time, 10,000, a lot of money. We'll see how much money is that. But at that time, 10,000 was a lot of money. And the Javindar said, no, I can give only 5,000. So while going back, Mahindra Sarkar said that I would have asked for 3,000. And he asked for 10,000, I got, you got 5,000. Just as I said, look, I'm a Brahmin, and Brahmins know how to bake. So, but anyway, but there was a lot of opposition. Actually, in 1875, there was a meeting of the subscribers, and it could not, there could be no conclusion. And then in 1876, in the subscribers meeting, which Sir Richard Temple, who was then the Governor General of Bengal, presided, and the famous Oriental scholar Rajendra Mitra actually opened the proceedings and strongly supported Mahindra's proposal. Richard Temple also strongly supported Mahindra's proposal and also government uh, decided to grant some money and also the building. So, and for that, um, that's, that's how the proposal was carried. Please next slide. So uh, these buildings do not no longer exist, but the top, first uh, top picture is the Indian Institute of Cultivation of Science. At that time, it was in 210 Bhuvaja, uh, street now it is now there is the Goenka College stands. So in that place, uh, that's the first picture is the picture of the floor, and the second picture is the Vijayanagaram laboratory because the Maharaja uh, Vijayanagar gave him eighty thousand for to set up the laboratory. But despite these efforts, you see there was basically there was hardly any science being done at that point of time. There are two people were actually do Indians. I would say two Indians were actually doing science. One was Javarishan, the other was Prabhu Chandra. Both were working in Presidency College. 
and uh, they had their own laboratories, their own students. And IAC is, the, I'll talk about cultivation as IAC is from now on, or cultivation perhaps. The IAC is, did not have any uh, one one in staff for research, and Mahindra believed that you should pay. That is, if somebody works for science, he should be paid. And also, uh, for listening to the lectures, for example, or hearing the demo, or seeing the demonstration, there was a fee. It had to pay. It was not free. So for these many, I'm sorry, for these many reasons, ISS really did not take up. For example, Ashutosh uh, Saraswati's lecture there, but uh, not, uh, as I said, that not too much activity was done. And in 1904, Mineral Sarkar passed away. Next slide. Next slide. Okay. And Ramon was living in a house uh, in uh, Scots Lane near Bobajar. So now uh, he, uh, when he was going to his office by Trump, he saw the signboard. And then in the evening, when he coming uh, coming back from the office, he uh, decided to ex ex see what is going on there. So he went to the door of ICS and knocked. And Ashubabu, Ashutosh Day. So there is a second Ashubabu here in our story. So Ashutosh Day, who was a staff there, opened. Uh, he was the only staff, of course. So and then asked what his business is. So he said, that, uh, "What is being done?" Ramon asked, "What is being done here?" So uh, Mandal's son Amit Lal was uh, in charge of that. So Ashubabu took him to Amit Lal, and Ramon said, "Will you allow me to do research here?" Amit Lal very, very readily agreed. He was very glad that his father's dreams, at least in some part, was coming true. Nobody could know at that time what is going to happen, but he was said, "At least somebody is going to do research here." And so for research. Um, actually, uh, Ramon shifted. Ramon shifted from this uh, house in Stocks, Scots Lane to uh, next slide, please. So, in the Premchand Boral Street, there is a 15 by 6, uh, Premchand Boral Street, where his, uh, Ramon used to say, This is just next door to the old IACS. And there was a door. Ramon, what did Ramon did was placed a door in between the two, two, uh, a, two uh, houses so that he could easily come there. Usually, he used to come around 5 o'clock, 5 30 in the morning. That's what Lokashundari says. Uh, uh, that he Ramon used to go to the ISS at 5 30 in the morning and that was that in 9 45 then uh, went home which is next door and then grabbed something to eat and by the time when he was sitting down after bath he was he shouted Ashubabu taxi and then Ashubabu would have called Ashubabu could have called a taxi and set it on the uh, keep it standing and Ramon would have just ran from his house to the taxi and then go to the office and while coming back after office, he always went to this ICS and worked there till 9.30 or 10. This was for the office days and for the work holidays and the uh, Sundays. It was completely ICS. Of course, I... Yeah. Now, Ramon had only one assistant, the same Masutos day whom I talked of. And in fact, Ramon was so inspiring that Ashutosh did, did his own research and published one paper, a, a single author paper in the Proceedings of the Royal Society. Next slide. So he went on walking there. What he did, we briefly look at, but uh, not really. Uh, okay, I'll just mention. But let us talk about the next uh, second uh, institution, that is the University of Calcutta. So, University of Calcutta, of course, was established in 1857, but it was not a teaching institution. It was just a something like West Bengal Board or CBSC Board, uh, which just conducts exams. The teaching was all done in colleges, and masters was taught in Presidency College, Sri Rampur College, Dhaka College. Now, uh, but in uh, when Ashutosh became the Vice Chancellor in uh, 2000, sorry, 1906, for the first year, Vice Chancellor for the from 1906 to 1914 for the first shift, and then two years later. So he decided to open some colleges, some uh, institutions, uh, some departments which will teach masters. So he uh, opened eight departments in the arts departments, including mathematics. At that time, mathematics was arts, it considered to be arts. But there was no science department for the simple reason that it needs laboratories and there was no money. So then he approached the national uh, British government and they said, what they said finally is this, something like this, that okay, we have got your application. Uh, we have many other, right now we don't have any money. We have many other commitments, and when there is when there is will some money, we'll consider it along with all the other uh, all the other applications. Which means basically, you see that okay for the juniors in the government language, this means no, not never. So this is what does means is. So then Ashutosh decided to ask Indians. So these two gentlemen, remember them, because these two gentlemen they were advocates. We are just hearing 
uh, about Ananta Kumar Sharbar Sharkar, who was an advocate. These three gentlemen were advocates, of course, and they did a lot of things. Okay, for example, Jadupur University, President Jadupur University owed a lot to them also, but let us talk of only Calcutta University. The University College of Science, which is at Rajabajar and Baliganj, this was founded by the, the money from these two papers. So they together gave about rupees 35 lakhs. Now, how much is 35 lakhs nowadays? That goes to that 35 lakhs. So what happened is that, okay, we, we have a very simple calculation. That is, uh, in, in 1912, a, one rupee coin was released. Okay, so this was uh, Fifth George, uh, 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 was the emperor of India and Britain, of course. <laughs> so uh, to uh, mark his com uh, coming to the throne. So a coin was released in 1912, and it, Contain about it was at that time it was a silver coin. Okay, so it would take, but at that time one rupee coin contained eleven point six six gram of silver. So if you just use that money and just convert, you guys go to a silver market or look look your open your paper or look at the Google. How much does eleven point six six gram of silver cost? It will see, you will see that about eight hundred times. Seven to eight hundred times the cost. It, that one rupee coin now costs that amount of silver now costs seven to eight hundred rupees. So that means that 35 lakhs is now converted to something like 200 crore. So that is the amount of money that they gave. And with this, the new departments were start. Please, next slide. So for uh, the, there are two public professors in chemistry and physics. So for chemistry, Ashutosh approached Prakula Chandu, and he readily agreed. He uh, joined in nine, 2000, uh, so in, again, 1915, after retiring from presidency. For uh, physics, Ashutosh had in mind Jagadish Chandra, but Jagadish Chandra refused possibly because he was thinking of building his own institution, Boshu Vigyan Mandir, which he started in 1917. So Ashutosh knew Raman through IACS. So uh, he, uh, he told you that he used to lecture in IACS. So the advertisement was published most probably December 27, because 26 December it was approved in the university. In 1913, the last date was 10th January 1914. The governing body of the public trust consists of these people: Ashutosh, Ramendra Shundra Tribedi, uh, Paul Yuan Yuanis Guru was the registrar of university, and of course, um, uh, a professor Botani later, Reverend Watt, uh, Dr. Nilakant Sharkar, the famous physician, Justice Nikhil Mollik, and Lord Satyendra Prasad Singh was the advocate general at that time of India. So his meeting was held in January 24, uh, and, and there's the foundation day of the university. And no one was lecturing at public professor of physics. Next slide. So this is the minutes of the GB. I'll just read, I don't know whether you can, I did his investigation, the Romans investigations on the theory of vibration and optics, which have attracted considerable notice among European physicists are embodied in 22 papers. By that time from 1907 to 1914, he has published 22 papers, three of them in, uh, sorry, seven in philosophical magazine, three in physical level, six in nature, and the bulletin of the Indian cultivation science. List. In 1913, the University of Madras awarded Raman the uh, Maharaja Trivandram Karjan Prize for the uh, Maharaja Trivandram Karjan Prize for research. Next. So the syndicate approved, but uh, uh, the GB, GB meeting was on 24th. The syndicate had a meeting on 24th. It was approved, but the Senate was a problem. Because in the Senate, the British uh, members wanted to stop the appointment, not of Raman, but they said that uh, you should not have rushed through. This is too fast. We should take more time. We should look at this, all these things, uh, and then decide. So there was a vote, and the British members lost. Okay. So actually, as I told you, the government really, really did not want the science, University College of Science. But anyway, uh, uh, Ashutosh was a something of a very dominating personality, and of course, he was an excellent leader. So he uh, he had his way, and he said that, for example, now here is the important part. Mr. C. V. Raman, this is from his address of Ashutosh. Mr. C. V. Raman, who had expressed his willingness to accept the chair, was an officer in the Indian Finance Department, where in the ordinary course, he would have drawn a salary of rupees 2,000 a month. As an ardent devotee to the cause of science, he was prepared to relinquish his more lucrative appointment under government and to come here as a professor of physics at a considerable sacrifice. As a professor of physics, he would have got rupees 800. So he would, he would have got 2,000 and then he could settle for 800. Next. So Ramon was, as I told you, Ramon was expected at 2000, and also he was expected to, because he was very brilliant, he was expected to become a member of the cabinet of the high star, which would be the best, highest position that an Indian could get, get, get in the government. So he joins you at 800, and there is house rent allowance of 125, so total 925. 
and robert was a government service it, it took some time for the permission to come now he first the first letter after this he that he after after accepting the appointment the first letter that roman wrote says that i i i i am not going to go abroad or any foreign or any other country because you see there was a condition for the other fellowship that goes the you have to go abroad for two years and take training there but there was no condition no such condition for palit fellowship and roman steadily said if you do that i'll not join i'm not going to go abroad and but uh, then uh, of course university relented and roman joined after joining this is very nice interesting that roman wrote a letter that am i expected to teach this would have been surprising to you but is at that time professors were not really expected to teach professor expected to carry on research direct research so the syndicate said no you are not expected to teach but roman started teaching anyway from the very beginning i don't know what prompted him to write the letter now that is if i write suppose if i write a letter to a syndicate that i am not going to teach then i'm sure i'll be back the next day but at that at that times were different no doubt about that text like this so even before roman roman joined there were three palit scholars who were actually taking also classes our classes started in 1916 and roman joined on 2nd july 2000 1917 so there were three palit scholars who were taking classes and they actually carried on on their own roman did not say that okay you have to work with me then they were talked talk, talk, talk as palit assistants but they are basically working on their own and those three persons were avinash chandra shah meghnath shah and shotrinath bhush okay this there was some uh, roman was very uh, also roman was very eager to uh, start, uh, uh, start research so the first thing that university get got was a letter from jagadish chand he said that roman is trying to lure my senior mechanic away giving him triple triple salary actually what was the and roman saw that there was actually no workshop in the university and you have to have a workshop to start a physics department so but he wanted trained personnel so uh, he looked for people around and he found that okay presidency college has a very good uh, workshop i think workshop senior mechanic and so he approached him and then the mechanic went to jagadish and jagadish and was furious and he wrote a letter to the university and nothing happened finally okay anyway this next So Roman was ex officio head of the department. So from 1917 onwards, every year he submitted a report on the department. We are not. I am not going to uh, talk talk on this. But you can see, just say that, for example, three papers by myself at the in progress. Three papers by myself dealing with the last mentioned field appeared during the current year in the philosophical magazine. Another communication in Nature, and I have also present under preparation. So four and a half. Okay. So. Uh, Remember that there is absolutely no, almost no facility, and Roman is working under that. This next one. Roman was the official head of the department, and he recognized, he organized the workshop. I told you about that, but he did not leave ISA. This is important. Roman effect was not discovered in our in our department. Roman effect was definitely discovered in ISA. We have uh, there is documentation for that, no doubt about that. Because Roman continued to work in ISA. The only thing is that the time that is spent in FC financial civil service was spent here. And the same story, the same Ashubabu called the taxi, and Ash Ramon just ran to the taxi and hopped on it, and then like going rather than going to the Dalhousie, yes, he came to Rajawadhar. That was the only difference, as far as the routine is concerned. Of course, Ramon used to teach, and because of Ramon, students from it was really a national university. Students from all over India talked to Ramon. And that actually later, as you see, that I'll briefly mention that 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 later gave rise to some trouble. Next slide, please. I'm sorry again because as I told you, my I have a bad throat, so this is warm water which I am trying <laughs> drinking. So Ramon never wrote a thesis. Okay, but uh, his his boss never um, had a doctorate for thesis. The thesis doctorate, but Ramon was uh, awarded the honorary doctorate or an scholarship in 1921 by the Calcutta University, and later of course many other universities gave him doctorate. In 1924, he was elected the fellow of the Royal Society. as palit professor ramon of course was a member of various you know, committees in cu and had ministry duties so actually it is difficult to see how ramon could manage to all those do all those things at the, at the time there was no internet there was all hardly any telephone uh, there was uh, no mobile phone and ramon used to actually if you look at the ramon's volume of work it will be surprised so he was a, also a member of the committee that investigated the affairs of indian institute of science and bangalore um, 
uh, it was a national committee because it was not working well. The uh, government formed a committee. He was a member of the committee. And later, actually, after he left Kolkata, he became the director of the Indian Minister of Science. Next slide, please. So he first visited uh, in, in Europe in 1921. He was selected as a delegate of Calcutta University, the Congress of Universities. Then he went to few other laboratories. We'll come to this story later. In 1924, he went to Canada and then US. In 1925, he was uh, he went to Russia. He's actually he was invited by the Russia for the vice president of the Academy of Sciences in Russia. Uh, next slide. But you see that while working, I was getting impatient. Because when the university started, when Raman joined, or at least when the science college started, the money was reasonable. Okay, but what happened was that after uh, Raman joined, basically 1970, 1980, 1919, remember that we had the freedom struggle. And because of the civil disobedience, uh, what is that moment? Which, which one is civil disobedience? Now, one is non cooperation, one is civil division, which I have forgotten. Sorry, but you see, I read this long time back. 1900, after the First World War, which was non cooperation? Put that time. See, yes. So, so, what happened was that because of the non cooperation movement, and there was this idea that I, uh, Gandhiji gave a call that uh, go out of these British foreign institutions, and the student number drastically fell. And at that time, the student fee was reason was quite important for the universities. Our roughly half the uh, uh, income from the universities came from the fee of the students. So it was very much of a problem. Ashutosh also uh, failed to collect, to uh, gather uh, money from other sources, and then he nearly he died. So, so, so Ramon was very impatient. So in the first, uh, for, there was two letters. In the first letter, he said that Calcutta University is doing an illegal thing because what Palit said, but there are two properties of Palit. One was in Rajabajar, the other was in Baligan, the Baligan Science College. What he said was that Baligan Science College, it is completely, it is written that the Palits will, that the first, uh, that, that all the properties will be for the Palit professor's work only. But what is happening is that in the Baligan Science College, you have these departments like botany, other departments, and then, uh, but those are not parts of the Palit professors, uh, Palit uh, fund. So either sell them and get the money in the Palit fund or give a rent. So there was this, the governing body agreed, the syndicate did not, the governing body of the Palit trust. So the syndicate did not. So, and then there was a lot of uh, negotiation. And finally, the uh, syndicate decided to, okay, give 12,000 rupees per year as a rent. So the Baligan Science College rent was paid to the Palit fund. Why I'm taking all, telling all this is that I, I will talk of Ramon Epic later, but I want you to understand, particularly the young students, I want you to understand that what was the handicaps, what was the situation those days under which Ramon and people like Shah Abos and others worked. There was hardly any money. At, in 1925, actually, the university could not pay the salaries of the professor for two months because there was no money. So this was the situation and under which they did work of such caliber that, that could bring an old age. Next slide, please. And Roman also proposed that to be a new institute inside the university. So it would have been a completely independent institute inside the Department of Physics. University uh, got the proposal, tried to make money for it, but finally failed. Uh, okay, why am I telling you this? Because later, this is not part of this talk, but later Mignatha did exactly the same thing. He made an institute inside the Department of Physics, and later it went outside the department and became the Shah's Don Nuclear Physics that we know now. So actually, the idea of building institutes inside the uh, departments were uh, started by Ramon and then later taken up by Shah. Next slide. Oh, this, I told you that slide, the end of the Baligan Science College. Next slide. Okay, we'll talk of Ramon Refik later. But what happened? After the discovery, Ramon knew that this uh, elastic scattering of light by molecules was a momentous, and he wanted to let the European scientists know about its importance. So the, he approached the university, and a four month deputation to the university was approved. Uh, approved. So, uh, and also there's some money for this, some uh, passage and other things. 
In Europe, he met scholars like Rutherford, Marie Curie, Pera, Louis de Broly, Eugene Brock, and later uh, some of them actually uh, they, they nominated him for a Nobel Prize. We'll come to that later. Next slide. University Press uh, helped him to publish reprints of the discovery article, and he sent it to the various uh, uh, important scientists. One we have uh, able, able to see because uh, it was sent to Niels Bohr, and it is there in the Bohr archive. So the in the front page, uh, on the front page, uh, Ramon signature is there. It was sent to Niels Bohr, and later, uh, as you'll see, that Bohr actually nominated him for Nobel. And this is a big, uh, this is this was sent to Mane Sigman, also a Nobel laureate. And also a member of the Nobel Committee, and this is Sigmund's uh, reply. I'm not going to read it. Uh, please, <laughs> you can see it first in the net. Please, next slide. And by 1928, we are talking about discovery uh, after the and various places. So Sommerfeld, this is important. Sommerfeld, the famous German uh, uh, physicist, Sommerfeld holds a record for physics, and that is that uh, in physics uh, he holds a record of having the maximum number of Nobel Nobel nominations without. The Nobel Prize. So he had 82 Nobel nominations at different points of time. In a year he died, he got Nobel nominations, but he never got the Nobel Prize. So, so but Sommerfeld was reputed to be a very, very famous teacher. So the basically there was, it was saying, saying that the German physics, which is basically the physics now those days for at least for quantum mechanics, was replaced on three persons like Sommerfeld, Einstein. So Sommerfeld wrote that. Your papers in the optical analog, the Compton effect from the subject of a lecture, which I gave in our colloquium at Munich. At the same time, I showed slides of some very beautiful photographs of your effect taken by Professor Pinchin at Bergen. We are all, we are all of us full of enthusiasm on this great result. Japan, this is important. Japan that has for a longer time worked in modern physics has nothing to show comparable with this discovery. Next slide. And then Somerville came to Calcutta. So some of it came to Calcutta at the invitation of Shaha and Ramon. Shaha, of course, was in, there in now at that time in Iraabad, but he invited Ramon. Ramon. So some of it was actually going to Japan. So he came to Bombay, went to Sri Lanka, came to Bombay. From Bombay, it came here and uh, was invited to deliver a lecture. He was awarded the honorary DSC of CU. He delivered a course of lectures on web mechanics, and this was lectures were subsequently printed as a book, and the lecture notes were kept by K. S. Krishnan and Nihil Ranjan Shen. So this is this was actually one of the very first books on wave mechanics. So Calcutta University can boast of two things. One is that the first translation of uh, English translation of Einstein's creativity papers was published by Calcutta University, translated by Shaha and Bosch, and the, one of the very first wave mechanics books by Schwarzfeld. Next, the 1930 Nobel Prize. The 1929 Ramon was nominated for the Nobel Prize by two persons, Charles Frederick and Niels Bohr. In 1930, Ramon's Nobel was nominated by ten. So of them, uh, okay, we have not uh, known a few, but the, 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 no, six Nobel laureates were there. Bohr, Lee de Broly, R.S. Rutherford, Charles Wilson, Japera, and John Star. So there were six Nobel laureates who nominated Ramon. Meghna Chau was also nominated for the Nobel Prize that year. And then there was a short list of three. Robert Wood, Meghna Chau, Ramon. Okay, it was basically understood that Ramon had got there. Because you see that it was it was recognized as a fundamental as a practical discovery. Robert Wood, the same Wood whose name was there, you described it as one of the best convincing proofs of quantum theory. We are talking about Ramon effect. And within two and a half years of the discovery, that is just before the Nobel Prize, 385 papers on Ramon effect has been written and five monographs were published. At that time, uh, the number of scientists was quite few compared to this. So 385 is a staggeringly large number, no doubt about that. Ramon uh, Shah's work was seen as a useful application, but not a discovery. And as you know, the Shah never got the prize. Next slide. So uh, this is uh, Ramon with his. I am sure you have seen this period picture. Uh, Ramon with his Ramon effect apparatus, and this is the first picture of Ramon effect that he published. Next slide. We will talk of Ramon effect later. There are some studies here also. So after the prize, on us. Came from all quarters. Ramon received honorary doctors from Perry and Dhaka. He was knighted by the British government. So Sir Ramon now. In fact, there is a story. What is what was Ramon's name? That's interesting. This is Chandrasekhar. His he was Christian as uh, Chandrasekhar Venkat Ramon. Then when he went to school, it was shortened Chandrasekhar Venkat Ramon. So what was the name? This is a very difficult problem because in South India things are a bit complicated. Okay, so Chandrasekhar was his father's name. 
and then uh, a visitor to uh, US visitor to Bangalore. This is a story which for later. This is a story. Uh, you, you know that Americans are much more free going. So they usually uh, uh, at that time also now, of course, it's very common. But at that time also, Americans called everyone by their names. But he, that, that visitor did not understand what was the name of Chandrasekhar Venkatraman, which one, which part is name. So then he asked uh, C.V. Raman, that what's your name? How should I call you? C.V. Raman said, sir. But anyway, in 1930, he was awarded the hugest medal of the Nobel Prize. But things were not that good in Kolkata. This is a part of the story. People do not say usually, but I, I think since it's a part of history, it should be aware of this also. Please, next slide. At Calcutta, okay, Roman was, no doubt, Roman was very good, great. But Roman was also very fixed with his ideas. And he angered a lot of people. A lot of people, a lot of very influential people. So Ramon left Kolkata in 1933 to become the director of Bengal, uh, Bengal, Indian Institute of Science in Bengaluru. But he was still there, the president of IACS. And he actually wanted to make IACS a world link, link, ranking organization. So since he is going away, he, he asked Krishnan. Krishnan was there in Dhaka, at Dhaka University, case Krishnan, his student. He asked Krishnan to be the secretary of ICS. Krishnan, uh, he created a chair for Krishnan in the professor position of professor in ICS by some endowment, and he wanted Krishnan to be the uh, secretary. But there was a campaign in the uh, in Kolkata Press. There were some very anonymous reports were published that Ramon is looking for only South Indians. Ramon hates Bengalis. This is absolute nonsense, but this, this campaign took hold. So what happened was that when Ramon wanted to, uh, when he was going away, he wanted to uh, change the constitution of ISA so that he could start run it uh, quickly well. And he wanted to, I told you that he wanted to have a world research institute. He actually wrote, wrote to people like Bohr and others. He wrote to people like Bohr and others. So that again. So what was that? First of all, there was that in anti-Bengali. Then Ramon actually taught a lot of Bengali, and at least eleven Bengali scientists got Nobel Prize. I'm sorry, got a doctorate under Ramon. Of them, uh, you, you know a few. Shishir Kumar Mitra was a student of Ramon. So his uh, associate defended, and they said he published that eleven. But Ramon actually also wrote a letter to the same newspaper, and he said that. If uh, he had not taken research students from outside Bengal, I am quite certain that the Nobel Prize in Physics would not have come to the east of Suez. That created further controversy. Next slide. So what happened when ICS uh, was discussed, there was a lot of machination, and basically Rahun was thrown out of ICS. Let us say it this way. His president, he was removed as president of ICS. And he left Calcutta in 1934, and he was alive for 36 years more. And he never came back to Kolkata. I know about the who are the people behind, but since uh, if students had not been present, I would have said that. But since students are here, just remember this. You can do, read it up. There, there are lots of writings on that. Yeah, that. You see that one was the point is that what was Ramon trying to do? Of course, Ramon's method was not really, I would say, democratic. Fine. But he was a genius, no doubt about that. He was a scientist par excellence. He was the first experimental physicist in country who built his own school. Jagadish Chandra never built a school. He did not have a student. Ramon had lots of students and they did excellently well. So if he dis and IACS has basically IACS was, was built by Ramon. It may be founded by Mandrula. But no doubt about that, it attained renown, world renown under Ramon. So if he wants ISCS to run in his own way so that he can make it a world ranking institution, why should he stop it? But that's exactly what happened. You see, one particular newspaper, Ramrita Bajar, was uh, so happy that Ramon was uh, Ramon was ousted from ISCS that said that, okay, Bengalis have now uh, succeeded, shown that uh, we can stand together. And a few years later, when Kesh Krishna, his student, was uh, elected the member head of the Royal Society, Amitabha simply did not publish that, that news. Next slide. So now we come to 
for the next next part let me go quickly to the ramon's research ramon basically worked in a uh, in acoustics optics these are the two basic fields later in bangalore he worked in the field of crystals crystallography diamonds and other things now in op acoustics his specialty was musical instruments particularly indian musical instruments unfortunately even i cannot understand those papers now because this acoustics is not really part of our syllabus it is too much classical too much mathematical i really even i i, I forget about uh, an ordinary student even we cannot really follow the ramon's papers because we are not trained to do that but it was no doubt about that ramon was one of the greatest but people uh, uh, scientists who are working in that field no doubt about it along with optics optics of course was his field where he succeeded science shown but acoustics also he was very he was really great now uh, students of ramon include famous i, I talked of krishnan sorry i have been writing krishnan twice here eli ramdas shurang shukumar banerji and i i wanted to guide here shishir kumar mitra some of i mean from sk i hope ks and then automatically it came as krishnan i wanted to write there sk mitra shishir kumar mitra then there were other i'll mention some so your principal in optics next slide so i'll talk of opt optics only and only very little about other fields and then of Uh, Ramon effect. So this is a whispering gallery. This was actually not studied by Ramon. Ramon student Vidhu Bhushan Ray, who later became a professor in our department, and in fact Vidhu Bhushan Ray was the Khaira professor. He suddenly died in 1940s, and Isen Bose, who was in Dhaka, came to Kolkata in his place. So if uh, a whispering gallery is a essentially a polygonal work, so that if you speak here uh, in the, in this softly. in this part of this room in the near wall you can hear on the other end but no, nobody can hear it in between okay so this is called whispering gallery in fact the most famous whispering gallery is the saint paul's cathedral i'm sorry this is saint paul's cathedral in london not in rome the gold gumbuz some of some of you have gone there the gold gumbuz of bijapur built by mohammad ali sir it was 50 years before saint paul's cathedral and of course if you do not want to go there or that far you can go to victoria memorial it, it is whispering gallery next thing so what really lord really said that sound vibrations what they are doing is the sound vibration is traveling along the wall the uh, reflection was such that you can listen you can listen only at the wall but nowhere else what really lord really did was put a stopper there in arrow stopper and then vibration stop because the sound vibration is going just along the wall that is a structure <laughs> now uh, what uh, vidhubhushan has said that it is it is not only true for um, Oh, acoustics is true for optics. So, uh, Bidhubushan Rai published his first paper on this, and at that time, Bidhubushan was just a student. But this was this was the work almost carried out completely alone by Bidhubushan. Ramon later became interested. Bidhubushan was a student. So, Ramon and Bidhubushan later worked in works. So, he this he showed that uh, Ramon and Roy, with the Bidhubushan, found some new aspects, particularly some bends in this uh, optics. And then Ramon went to the Saint Paul's in London. in post cathedral in london and showed that uh, the bands that he observed the like the type of bands that he observed in optics was also present in the acoustics so from acoustics he they got the idea for optics optics and from optics they got the idea for the acoustics that's how science actually works okay from one field to the other field we get ideas next slide please and also he used this ramon used this much later to explain the <coughs> iridescence of pearl pearls book to 1920 i told you 1921 ramon went to went abroad at that time there was no plane so he was coming back it took about 15 days ships on ship and when looking at the mediterranean sea the very deep blue he was very so wherever ramon went he was never uh, without his nickel prism without his telescopes so he had his prism with in his pocket when he was traveling back and he was studying the uh, polarization of the reflected light from sea He was studying the color with filter. What is the color of the sea? And he said, what he found is that Lord Rayleigh had said that the sea is blue, blue because the sky is sky is blue, and we know why sky is blue. So, uh, uh, and the sea, the sky is reflected by the sea, and that's why the sea is blue. No one, no one found that that's that's not true because the sea is blue is completely different color. So, Ramon's observation showed that I have to be wrong, 
and no one explained it by passing light through water and showed this case. So he he took some first he took some corporation water, studied its scattering. Then he went on purifying the purifying the water, and saw the scattering of the light. How the a pure very pure water and there is a formula Einstein formula. Einstein's only ask for if you, you, I'm sure you have heard of this Einstein's uh, fluctuation relations for this uh, Brownian motion. So there is this fluctuation relation. You see that because there is a fluctuation, the water medium, this there is some density fluctuation because in some places there are more particles, there are some less particles. And Einstein calculated for that. So Einstein then said that because the water always has some fluctuation, there is a density fluctuation, and because there is density fluctuation. That, that density fluctuation will scatter the light. And that's what exactly Roman proved. So, so actually, if he proved that the, it is the scattering of light is can be explained by this Einstein relation. The color of the C at this Roman ultimately concluded is really due to diffraction. Next slide. Here is another story. The story is this. In 19, okay, the next year is the centenary year of ghost statistics. So in 1924, when Bose wrote the paper and sent to Einstein, so he, uh, okay, if you have read it, the Planck's distribution, you would have known that there is a factor of two there. And that factor of two, where does it come from? So Bose wrote that it is, it is because photons have spins and they can spin up and down. So at that point of time, there was no idea that particle, particles have spin. So what Einstein did, you remember that the Einstein translated that paper. So Einstein removed that idea of the spin and put polarization. So if you look at Bose's paper, then you will find that it is completely quantum mechanical derivation. There is no wave theory anywhere. And how can you have a polarization of a particle? So the only idea of wave comes from that statement of polarization. And Bose never kept his copy, any copy, in that paper is lost. Next, spin was discovered by Ulen Beck and Goldsmith, two students of Eden first. And in fact, because of many, many, many other reasons, the spin is the only property that never got the Nobel Prize for its discovery. Because there was too many claimants. Compton talked of spin earlier, never published it. Bose talked of spin, but that was actually removed from the paper. And later, Ulen Beck and Goldsmith, in fact, Kremers also talked of spin. But Heisen, uh, yeah, but he, he had the misfortune to speak to Heisenberg, and Heisenberg simply blasted him out of his room. <laughs> it cannot be. So there was too many others for the spin, and that's why spin never got the Nobel Prize. But anyway, in 1931, the only evidence that we have that uh, Bose actually talked about spin is a 1931 paper by Bhagavantanan Ramon. So Bhagavantanan Ramon performed an experiment to find out the spin of photon. And there they wrote that Isen Bose has told Shatinra, Isen Bose has told us that in his original paper, in his original version, which does not uh, appear in the printed version, he talked of photon spin, and we are going to measure the photon spin. So the, uh, I think the importance of that paper is that part because he mentioned photon spin because the paper, if you read the paper. You will see that actually he, Roman was thinking classically, but spin is a completely quantum mechanical idea. You really cannot explain spin by something like a particle spin going, um, going out of itself. It's not possible. So spin is a completely quantum mechanical idea. And so Roman's um, basic premise was not really true. But anyway, the experiment was interesting, no doubt about that. But because this started with a purely classical flight model, they did not succeed. Next. And now we come to the Roman effect. So history, 1923. So the elastic light scattering was uh, predicted by Smirkel. In 1925, Kramers and Heisenberg, the same Kramers and the same Heisenberg, they applied perturbation theory of the newly discovered quantum mechanics for the ideas of Smirkel. Then in 1928, 17th February, Landsberg and Mendelstam see unexpected frequency shifts in scattering from quartz. In 1928, 28 February, C. V. Ramon and K. S. Krishnan see feeble fluorescence from heat solvents. So actually, if you see the Ramon effect, if you term it like that, it was first seen by uh, Landsberg and Mendelstam. But they published much later, number one. 
And number two is, you'll come to that point later. So Nobel Committee actually discussed in very detail that who should be the uh, considered the discoverer of Raman, Raman effect. And it was, they, they decided it has to be Raman, no doubt about that. But if you say that, okay, as a strange line was first seen in the experiment of Lenzman. And in 1930, C.B. Raman took his Nobel Prize in Physics. 1961, invention of laser makes Raman experience reasonable. Otherwise, you will see that it's very difficult to do Raman. In 1977, surface enhanced Raman scattering. Okay, this, this, I'm not going, going into that. But it enhanced the Raman spectroscopy by something like 10 to the 10 to 11 times. So now you can, now you can identify individual molecule on a surface. A single molecule can be seen on the surface by Raman spectroscopy. Next. But there is, as I told you, there is history within history. So I told you that in 1921, Ramon becomes interested in scattering. 1923, look the numbers. Ramon and Ramanathan observed very faint sign of a different color. They are looking at scattering for alcohol. And, but they thought that alcohol was impure. Then Krishnan observed a similar phenomena. Now in 1927, Venkata Sharan, again all the Ramon students, so light scattered by glycerin change color. At this point of time, Ramon was at the Korean nearly getting somewhere. So actually Ramon came to the idea, but okay, there is another study here, which I'll go to next. But Ramon came to the idea of there is a new, new line before Lansberg, no doubt about it. Ramon was looking for it. Lansberg and Mendelssohn were not really looking for it. They just got it. But Ramon was actually doing performing experiments to look for it. They look, he was looking for those lines, no doubt about that. So 1928, 20 February, the discovery. Now, why uh, when Ramon was asked why could not you do it earlier? You see that you need a very strong source of light because Ramon effect is very weak effect. So he did not have he was using sunlight and using filters, but the uh, sunlight source was not that strong. He was basically taking a mirror, inflicting the sunlight. Then he got a telescope in the ICS and used that to focus the sunlight on the mirror so that it becomes a much stronger source. And that a telescope is basically a light bucket. It collects light and concentrates it at some point. So that's what he was being done. <laughs> and that, uh, that once that is done, he got a very strong source of light using filters. Then he could monochromatize it and then do the Raman effect. Next slide. But what he was talk talking about, this is interesting. Raman was looking for the light, but what he was looking for, what actual effect he was looking for, this is interesting. Compton, you know Compton effect, X ray comes and scatters of the electron. So Compton all discovered this in 1923. That is, it was considered the definite proof of photon hypothesis. In fact, Ramon had also written that uh, he was looking for proof of Einstein's photo photoelectric, Einstein's photon hypothesis. At that time, it was not photon, of course, but Einstein's photo uh, light quantum hypothesis. Ramon had written that we are looking for. That. So what he was trying to look for is that what Ramon was in Ramon, uh, Compton got the Nobel in 27. So what? Ramon was trying to look for is the optical analog, sorry, not Ramon effect, optical analog Compton effect. So uh, I don't know which classes the students read, but I think there is always a question uh, by my colleagues here can be definitely vouch for that, that why do not we see optical effects in Ramon, optical visible light, Ramon effect in visible light? That's a very standard question in BSC. Because it will be very, very small, because X has a much larger, larger, stronger light, a much smaller, much higher energy or much shorter wavelength, you can see the shift. In uh, visible light, you, it, it, at that time, it was just not possible. So Roman was uh, looking for a, something which was not really there. So at first, he did not understand the effect. I will show you the next slide that will show you. That at first, he did not understand the effect. And then, within seven days, OK, he was a genius, no doubt about that. So after doing the experiment once or twice, Within next within next seven days, when he presented the paper to Nature, it was a correct explanation. So, what was he thinking of? On to next slide. This is a paper cutting for statesman. So, it was this Ramon effect was discovered 28 February 1928. It was a leap year, and Ramon called this reporter from the statesman, and this report was published. Now, if you look at Compton spectra. Then Compton spectra scatters of electrons. So matter consists of electrons. So Compton effect is independent of the material. Because all materials have electrons, you are looking at electrons. You have photons scattered by electrons. 
So if you look at carefully, I don't know whether you can read it. The the stated effect is okay. Quite there is a black ink here. Quite independent of the material. So he was thinking of Compton analog. Now Raman's famous biographer Venkata Raman has labored here with very much to show that okay he it is not really he was not thinking of Compton analog. But I think this paper conclusively proves that he was looking for he was thinking of Compton scattering. But remember that Raman was an experimentalist. He was on the trail of something which he has already seen. And within seven days, if you look at the nature paper on 8th sent on 8th, 7th, 8th March, you can see that the, the real, real explanation is there. But the first time Roman actually made a mistake, no doubt about that. I don't know, uh, please, next slide. Actually, it is in the, okay, the, the, the altered color is quite independent of the, this is from the archive of the Roman research archive, and somebody has blotted out the quite part. Okay, next slide, please. So what happens now? Robin effect. Okay, now the little bit of the physics. What happens? Okay, you can next can carry on. Oh, sorry, the PDF. Na? Next, go back, go back. Sorry. So what happens when light falls on the material? It can have transmission, reflection, absorption, luminescence. Now we can have light putting for elastic and inelastic scattering. Next slide. We know of Rayleigh scattering. So photon comes, and we know why the sky is blue because the blue light scatters more. But remember the one thing that Rayleigh scattering first of all, Rayleigh scattering is ah. Uh, Elastic, so it does not change the energy or wavelength. And Rayleigh scattering is polarized. Polarized. Next, next slide. What happens in Raman? What happens in Raman? What? Why do you talk of elastic scattering? Elastic scattering. The elastic scattering means the light comes, it scatters of the photon, it scatters of the atom, or whatever the scattering source is there. It does not change any energy. So blue light comes and goes as blue. But if if you think of a molecule, so when metals uh, when lights were uh, was giving the slide, giving that uh, talk, that somebody said that it looks like, it cannot be true because it looks like molecules are talking. That's exactly what Raman effect is. Molecules talking. You see that what happens? The a molecule suddenly starts to vibrate. So you know that this vibration and, uh, for example, rotation, these are quantized. So what happens is that in the Raman effect, the particle, next slide, the particle, uh, the, the atom, or the, I'm sorry, the molecule, the molecule goes to an excited state. So, so what happens in Raman spectroscopy, the molecule goes to an excited state and then comes back. Now, if it comes back to the original state, then it is elastic. But if it comes back to the different state, the higher state or the lower state, then it's Raman effect. Strokes or anti-strokes. Now, what does the features? Why do why say molecules talk? Why did Robert Wood say is the one of the greatest proofs of quantum theory. Because now you can look at the levels in the atoms at molecules, energy levels in the molecules. That's the importance. Stick scattering does not tell, you, tell us anything about the molecule because it has not done, done anything to the molecule. It has come and gone away. Elastic scattering tells us about the molecule, information about the molecule. Next slide. So this is, it. so what happens in normal effect? It, it goes up from this state to this state. This is a virtual state. Okay, I'm not going to talk about virtual state now. I don't have time. So from virtual state, it can comes back to the original state. That's rally. If it comes back to a higher state, it is strokes. If it comes back to a lower state, it is anti strokes. Next slide. So this is the original experiment. Roman, what, what was it? You have sunlight. Then you have violet filter. Then violet light comes here. This was a spectroscope. Then you look at the rally scattered light and the Roman scattered light. If violet scattered light and blue, green. Its energy is decreasing from violet to green. So you have a green filter. That's what that's how it was done in Raman effect. It, at that time there was no <laughs> direct, no electronic detector. So this is how what is done. The green filter, and you can look at the green. So there was there's no green light here. It's only violet that is coming. And now if you use the green filter, you see light. So that means the light has changed color. This is the news. This is that this is something that we use nowadays with the using laser. Next slide. So why Raman spectroscope? Information and the rotation vibration levels, I told you, molecule talking. Normally, if it was small, but accessible by use of laser, now it is very useful. Contem uh, complementary information infrared spectroscope, I don't think I will have time, but let's see. In situ analysis of organic and inorganic compounds, analysis of aqueous solutions and solids, 
usually mm -hmm. resonance and surface and surface resonance means it increases the Raman effect by 10 to 10 to 10 to 11 times. So you can test single molecule. Next. <laughs> Next. Next. I'm sorry. Go on. I cannot go through there. <laughs> so yeah. Next earlier one. This polar is important. Raman effect is polarization. Raman effect is polar uh, shows polarization. Raman effect shows polarization, shift in light, color color. Uh, valley scattering shows polarization. No shift in color. Fluorescence shows shift in color, no polarization. These are the three differences. Next slide. Next. So look at the cross section. This is Raman, 10 to the minus 29, much smaller than this. So that's why it took a very long time to understand that why, what was happening, Raman effect. In fact, Shaha, who was not really a very much good books of Raman, uh, said that Raman has done something which has shown the European physicists, European scientists, that we can also do something. Next slide. Oh, God. No, you may correct anyone. I think I'll skip the physics part. Okay, Raman effect of so next slide. So you see that the Raman spectra, you can fingerprint the molecule. This is you, you just take up glucose, looks like this. Lactic acid looks like this. Spectra, they're completely different. This is written in. Next slide. Diagnostic advantage. You don't need biopsy. There is no destruction of the molecule atom. Wavelength selection, you can use later. Raman effect is available in laser and other things. In fact, the Raman, X-ray Raman effect was also found in our university. Anyway, also first. Next, earlier slide, please. So directly measurable was small. We can measure very small concentrations. You don't, you in vivo diagnosis. Next slide. Next. Continue. Next. Applications in daily life. You can use fingerprint spectra. You can use small samples, something like so you can test low concentration. I told you single molecule sensitivity. Used for detecting explosives, nuclear waste, water pollution, and so on. Next slide. So you can use it pharmaceutical, material science, forensic, many, many places. Next slide. Next slide. Look. Raman spectra of normal breast tissue, breast tissue non uh, uh, benign cancer, I'm sorry, benign cancer and cancerous tissue. Look at the difference. You can just look at the spectra and see, okay, this cell has cancer. Next slide. Raman scattering, you see, look at, just, just take some ordinary mat uh, uh, organic matter. Look at, flow, look at the spectra of fat on the top, Protein in the middle, water in the minimum, water in the bottom. Next slide. Next. The whole spectrum of ghee, oil. So you can, you can see, I don't know whether you can read all these things, but you can see that they are in different places. So this is first principal and second principal component robot. And you can see that you can easily find out which one is ghee, which one is in, which one is uh, in impurity, and so on. Next slide. Okay, this is again for the hepatitis C. Next slide. I think I can finish now. So Ramon uh, is a molecular fingerprinting. Ramon is most sensitive to symmetrical bonds, actually. Okay, I have skipped that part, actually. Highly sensitive to slight change in bond angle and strength. Ramon scattering can be excited at any laser frequency. Resonant Ramon effect of for most carbon materials is very important. And the Ramon expert is highly versatile. You can no complicated sample preparation. You know, your sample preparation takes a lot of time in material science, but in this Ramon effect is rather easy. Next. Next. Okay, these are the strengths and the limitations. Limitations, you can understand that it is very weak, but with laser, now we are uh, going above that. Next slide. So it says vibration spectroscopy, it's a complementary to infrared because you see Ram uh, Raman effect is symmetric effect, or rather infrared spectroscopy is asymmetric. Scattering based, not transmission or deflection. So and you need to pick up excitation energy. You can feel with a laser, you can easily tune it, and other things not topped out. Okay. Next. Next. Okay, these are the, I thought that I would be able to cover this. Sorry, these are the, I told you that the symmetric and asymmetric traces. You can see which one is Ramon. If it is symmetric, then it is Ramon active. Otherwise, it will be into. Next slide. Okay, so these are the sources journey into light by G. Venkata Raman. I told you that the Calcutta Municipal Gadget, it, I told you that in 1931, I, I took the pictures from there, but this has been published later in 1988, again republished. Archives of the University of Calcutta. This is a book written by uh, my two of my, my, me and my colleague Anirban and Rajinder. The has been done. This is the first 20 years of the physics given. This has been, unfortunately, this is not available in the country. This has been published in Germany. <laughs> it's not available in our country. 
and we, that's why we are written in Bengali also. Shonajara Dilgudi, Kolkata Vishwadar, Padatta Vidya Charcha. Thank you very much. Next. Next. Oh, I should have acknowledged means uh, my friends and colleagues on Irvan Devnaran and Rajinder Singh, who is in Rajinder Singh in German. He's a professor in German. Next slide. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gangopadhyay, for his excellent speech. This is the centenary, centennial year of discovery of Compton effect and only seven years to celebrate the Nobel Prize of C.V. Raman for his famous Raman effect. Not only a great scientist, Raman was a good administrator and founder of research institutions. Being a Tamil origin, he worked in Bengal for long years, but controversy and criticism was always around him. With his increasing popularity, criticism also increased. After so many decades, this remained so relevant in the history of Bengal's science research. Thank you, Professor Gangopadhyay, for highlighting this history to the young generation. Without knowing this history, you will never know your University of Calcutta and other research institutions all over the India. Thank you, Professor Gangopadhyay, for his excellent speech. With this, I will now uh, conclude the first session. Our next session will start after 10 to 15 minutes. Now the aud audience are requested to take a few uh, tea and some snacks. And we will back uh, after 15 minutes. Thank you.